Okay, the next ones. This again, this has been asked a few times about um, replicating Michaela or applying it to other schools. So <coughs> primary, how would you apply in primary and could you replicate it in coastal areas or rural areas and how would that work? Okay. I mean, it's funny because everybody has their own thing and they think, well, could it possibly happen here? You know, could it happen in Yorkshire? Could it happen in a coastal town? Could it happen in a primary? But it, these are all uh, systems and values that are universal, that could happen anywhere. Um, of course it could happen in a primary. I mean, you, you, you just insist on higher standards with regard to the behavior and you teach them didactically because... Everyone learns best when being taught didactically, uh, just as Olivia made the point about all of you uh, sitting here and listening to us now. Um, it, so you would do that with young children, you would do that with coastal children, you would do that with Yorkshire children. I don't see why there would be a difference. Um, I, I suspect if we were on the coast, people would be saying, but could you do that in the inner city in London with uh, children from ethnic minorities? I mean, they, they, it just so happens we're here, so then they're saying it can't happen elsewhere. It's ludicrous. I mean, children are children, and, and, and they need to be uh, taught because that's what our job is. They are children, we are adults. Children push, we push back. That's our role. That's what we're meant to do. When we don't do that, we let them down, right? We let them down. And what is so sad is that the children who are most less let down in our society are the poorest. They are the children because often they come from challenging situations. The parent might be working several jobs. They might have several brothers and sisters. And because no one is bringing them order, they don't necessarily have the order at home. They don't find it at school. They spin out of control. They don't ever become anything, and then all we do is blame it on poverty. It's wrong, I tell you. Look, of course there is an old boys network. Of course that Cameron had various advantages, or Boris Johnson has various advantages. I would never deny that. But the, what is the point of complaining about Cameron's advantages? What you have to do is change what is possible for the poor. You have to do what is within your means. <laughs> and it's all within our means as teachers to change the world. But unless we, we use the right tactics, unless we understand that it is our role as adults to play the role as adult and say, no, that's wrong, and teach them. We have a top of the, we talk about being top of the pyramid. And at the bottom of the pyramid, the children are at the bottom of the pyramid. They're doing things because they want to avoid a detention or avoid a demerit. And that's okay to start there. But the journey is to make it to the top. And when you move up, you're doing it because you want to get a merit. You want to please somebody. You're moving up, well, you want to impress someone. You want your teachers to like you. But when you get to the top of the pyramid, you do it because that is who you are. So the little children that Joe so beautifully talked about who say thank you because they're being forced, when they say thank you later, they do it because that is who they are. And the problem is that too many of us think that coastal children or Yorkshire children or black children or brown children or children who live in an estate or children who have a mother as, as a single mom, that they can't do it. That it's an automatic thing, that if you're poor, you cannot behave. We just presume that. Yet the children in India and in China and Jamaica and Nigeria, for some reason, while they are far poorer than the children here, they do behave. And that is because the parents in Nigeria and Jamaica and China and India and so on, they play their role. The teachers play their roles as adults to say no and to help those children grow up so that they can be like us and sit in a room and listen to me and be engaged and think, think for themselves. It is through didactic teaching and discipline that they become creative. We prevent their creativity when we squash them with our ideas of liberation. You cannot be free as a child unless you learn how to behave and how to sit in a chair. When I think of the years I spent with children not bringing in a pen to an exam. What kind of madness is this? We need to have a revolution. And I know you are all on board.
Lord, because you're here. You need to spread the word. You need to tell all your friends and all your families. You need to get them to understand that we need to change this country because we will lose our country. I'm telling you, we will lose our country if we cannot change our children. Our children are our future. That's what they are. They're the future. And it is for us to make sure that the poorest can compete with people like Cameron and Boris. It is not fair that they run the country. Our children should run the country and the only way in which they will do so is if we teach them in a system and in a culture of respect and authority where you play your roles as adults. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I got slightly carried away. <laughs>